In this video, I wanna show you my approach to speed edit headshots and studio portraits like this one to get great results fast using Lightroom and Photoshop. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pai, welcome to Adorama TV. I don't like to beat around the bush. Let's get straight into this. So I have here a headshot loaded up. This is of my friend and model Kiara. We'll link her up in case you wanna give her a follow, but it comes from one of our previous Adorama TV tutorials on, if I can talk, on how to quickly do a nice professional headshot setup with just one light. So check out that video if you wanna see how this was shot. Let's get right into the actual editing, and this would be a great time to pause the video, download the exercise file, which is this image, and you can find that in the description below. Enough with the hands. I am in the develop module inside of Lightroom, and what I'm gonna say is step one, optional. Start with a preset, it could be your own, it could be something that you purchased, but start with the kind of overall look and color you'd like to apply. So it doesn't matter how you get there, just start there. If you'd like, if you want to go just purely natural, you can do that too. What I'm going to do is apply Visual Flow's Modern Pack Soft Light just to get some nice warmth to the image. And let's go from this place. What we're going to do from here is actually do what I refer to as dark mode editing. And I've explained this previously. If you want an in-depth guide to that, you can go and check that out. But what this essentially means is anytime I'm working in the studio, I'm putting highlights on my subject's face. So I can pull the exposure down and then I can actually start controlling background and all of this stuff independently, my subject and everything, by just moving around my sliders a bit. Okay, now I do have some gigantic lights in my face at the moment, so it's a little bit difficult for me to uh, see. I'm hoping I get white balance and everything kind of right. But what I love about this is by editing dark mode, pulling the exposure down, raising the highlights, raising the white point, not only do we get to a really controlled level of contrast, but we get softer looking skin. So I love that it kind of does a little bit of our work for us by simply using this technique. And to show you, I'm gonna show you the before versus the after. Look at how that simply pulling the exposure down and raising the highlights can really help in kind of bringing back, uh, well, making skin tone a little bit more flattering, sort of reducing a little bit of the detail in skin texture. Okay, so find a balance on your image. Here, I, I, I like it right here. And again, I'm gonna check this I'm going to check a look at this after I finish just to make sure that the lights aren't messing with my, my eyes right now. What I'm also going to do is in the Visual Flow Toolkit, I have this option to reduce detail. It's detail minus minus, and it says next to it, close up newborn boudoir. If you don't have Visual Flow, no worries. I'm going to show you guys what it's doing. So if I press this, you'll immediately notice that all the detail softens up. And what's happening, take a look at presence. It's actually shifting presence, so we reduce texture and clarity and dehaze uh, from where it's at right now. So watch, when I apply detail minus minus, those drop, and we get this softer look. Now just with these settings, look at this, we've gone from this to this, no retouching as of yet. So I can take this and synchronize it over all the images and be good. The only other thing too is, again, I'm not sure if it's my uh, my the lights in my face, but I do see quite a bit of green on her. So what I'm going to do is take a white balance read off the eye. And let's just see where it's at. I feel like something around plus 22 to 27 gets me to a, a, a good sort of neutral magenta. And I'm going to raise the warmth a little bit. Maybe raise the exposure a bit. And because I'm blind with this light, I, I would love for a better way to film these. You know, like a light that doesn't blind you, but that's impossible. It goes against everything in physics. Okay, I'm gonna raise the shadows a bit. And I'll raise the black point just a bit. And this looks nice. I do say a bit a lot. It's kind of like my Bob Ross happy cloud, you know, expression. Cool, so step one was, you know, applying the look. Step two was going to a dark mode edit. Step three was reducing detail by subtracting texture, clarity, and dehaze. And then from here, I'm kind of getting the right temperature and whatnot. All right, so this looks pretty good. I'm gonna to go to step four, which is any local adjustments that you'd like to do. This would be a great time to do it. 
what I'm going to do is select a masking tool and I'm going to choose the brush. You can see that I'm using the latest updated version of Lightroom. So we have kind of a new uh, set of tools over here on the right side. Same stuff. Well, we, get, we have some new stuff too, but uh, we use it all the same way. What I'm going to do is with that brush selected, I'm going to go down to Eyes Whiten. Again, this is from the Visual Flow Retouching Toolkit. So if you don't have it, it's just a great time to pause, dial in the settings, save it out as a preset for yourself. You're welcome. Okay. And no, this isn't piracy. As the developer of these you know, software tools, I can give them away if I want to. So yeah, there's that too. Look, I'm going to paint this in. Okay. And you're going to go, Pie, that looks horrific. I hate it. It's so messy. And yes, her eyes are glowing like an alien, but that's your sign that you've gone too far. Before we do that though, let's go in, zoom in. What I like to do first is while the effect is on the bold side, I'm going to hold down alter option. One of the big things for me is to paint off kind of following the shadow and to refine this mask a little bit. So I'm going to paint it off the inside of the eye, paint it off underneath, and then holding alter option, I kind of feather to make sure that the mask follows the highlight and shadow of the eye. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, right? Paint off, go right here. So now if I look at this mask, you can see that it's kind of refined to just the highlight areas of the eye. From here, I can zoom out and I can see, did I go too far? Kind of. So what I'm going to do is hold alter option, click on the pin and drag to the left. Now this will reduce or strengthen any effect uh, incrementally. So based on the numbers that are kind of dialed in. So I'm going to bring this back to maybe like half power. And that looks pretty good. So your, your clue to this is to either zoom out to this level, or you could even go to grid view. If you notice in this grid view that the eyes are popping like aliens, you know, then you know, you've gone too far. Press G by the way, to go to grid view. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. I might do one additional whitening on the right side. And this is you know, if you want to go into this level of detail, you totally can. Um, you also don't have to, right? So I'm going to do one little last adjustment on just the right side. So I can bring the right side up a little bit because the right side, I think, got um, a little bit darker due to just where the hair was falling. I'm going to zoom out and same thing, holding alter option. I'm going to drag to the left until it kind of blends nicely with the other eye. I don't want to go too far on this because I do want the right eye to be a bit darker. It kind of naturally fits into the way that the image is lit. So this is good. Now you can go enhance irises. You can go further, but I'm going to show you one extra trick here. Notice that I have a catch light enhancer. This is another brush that you can kind of save out. And what we're going to do is jump in instead of brightening overall in the eyes and whitening and stuff. I find that this is often enough just by itself. So with this, I'm just going to put a little dot right over the catch light and right over that catch light and same thing on here and same thing right here and what it does is it brightens those highlights in the eyes so when i zoom back out it almost looks as though it got brighter like the eyes got brighter but in reality they didn't it was just the catch lights that i'm enhancing so that's all i'm doing here and if you want again you can hold down alter option you can reduce the effect a bit so it's a bit more natural but this is is good in my opinion Okay, we've got the basics dialed in. This is where I would go to Photoshop, okay? So press Control E or Command E to take this into Photoshop. And what we're gonna do to make this quick and dirty is uh, we're gonna use Adobe's new neural filters inside of Photoshop. It's kind of fun to see where Adobe's going with all this stuff, because you can imagine it's gonna get even more powerful as we go, okay? We're loaded up. Let's go right up to filter. I'm not going to create a new layer or anything. Remember, this is kind of a quick and dirty edit. I'm just going to go filter, neural filters. I'm only going to select, I'm going to make this super turboed. So look, skin smoothing, turn it on. That's it. Nothing else. Turn it on. Output to a new layer. If you want to finagle this, you can. But look, I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to control the strength with opacity. So all I'm going to do is dial this back to somewhere that is kind of nice and natural, but it has a bit of a, a nice effect. So look at this. All it's doing is diminishing a bit of the lines and smoothing a little bit of the texture. And it's good enough. I'm going to press control S, save it out and go back to Lightroom. I'm going to show you one last little trick. So step 
I think we're at six now, is going to be a bit of a fine tuning adjustment back inside of Lightroom. So what I'm going to do is bring a little bit of the attention into the face. Notice how the chest is catching quite a bit of the light. So what I'll do is add a radial burn. Again, another kind of quick and dirty way of doing this. Press Shift M. You could have done this, by the way, earlier before you took it to Photoshop. I often like to leave images a little more flat and leave this for my last step just in case I want to you know, adjust this ever in the future. Uh, but with this mask selected, so what happened was it just dropped in a radial burn at a negative 0.5 exposure. So if you want, you can just do that on your own. Pull this right up to the face and the eyes. I'm going to shrink it down a bit. And this is where you're going to kind of bring the exposure down just to get the body a little bit darker than the face. And, you know, honestly, 0.5 is already pretty good. Then from here, we can actually raise the exposure overall. We can lift highlights a bit, lift the white point a bit, get a little more contrast. And what happens is Lightroom sort of doing our dodging and burning for us because that Photoshop uh, neural filter did a bit of this smoothing. And if I kind of increase my, my whites and kind of just control these highlights, then I get this nice bit of uh, contouring on the face naturally from that combination of uh, adjustments. So I'll go back to the mask. I'm gonna adjust the exposure down just a little bit more to right here, and that's great. Using this method, I can get to good results in just a minute or two per image. And this is gonna be good enough for most uses. Granted, if you know, we were going to take this to a magazine or we want to go beyond this, I might hand it over to a professional retoucher to go and go crazy with it with local dodging and burning and whatnot. But for most clients, this is going to be enough. And that's what I want you guys to kind of focus on when you're editing is not to over edit. Okay, so let's just take a look at the final before and after on this image. So here's the raw file. I want you guys to see these side by side. I mean, isn't that wild? Like just a couple adjustments in Lightroom, going into Photoshop, popping back. It's, it's crazy to me. And from here, this is where I would create like, let's say my black and white. So I'd create a virtual copy by pressing control apostrophe, press V, and you can do your black and white. I might bring the highlight and white point up a little bit more for this. Maybe play around with the black point. Get a little bit more contrast in the image and I dig it. Okay. I'm going to go to like right here, maybe bring up overall contrast a little bit more. I love it. I always find that, you know, when I go to black and white, I can add a little bit more detail, a little more texture, a little more everything. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want notifications when new videos go up, you can turn that on as well. And I like hearing from you all. I actually go and read all the comments of these videos. It gives me ideas for future videos. So if you have questions, ideas, post them. I don't get a chance to reply to everybody, but I do actually check them out. In the meantime, if you guys want to follow me personally, you can find me at PyJirsa. And that's kind of my hub for everything that I do. So I'll see you guys later. Peace. See you next week.